Well, good morning, my friends. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on kind of things that are going on around here. It wasn't a great week for me last week. Uh, <laughs> I uh, had a little mishap with my Jeep, which uh, is now going into the shop to get repaired. Seems, uh, <laughs> it seems when you park on a hill, you have to actually set your parking brake or you run the risk of, uh, of your Jeep rolling away, rolling down the hill, running over all your irrigation stuff and hitting a tree. I'm not a very happy camper. This is no freaking good in anybody's book. Oh my God. What happened? Well, uh, it was parked at the top of my driveway. I uh, jumped out, forgot to set the parking brake. It was in gear, walked in the house, heard some noise, ran back out. Um, <laughs> I watched it crash into a tree, take out all my, uh, all my irrigation and it just absolutely destroyed everything here. Just destroyed the top. Well, it is the next morning after the carnage. And uh, here is some of the carnage. There's tree left over in there. Took the spare tire off. Uh, brand new Brand new uh, rock hard uh, uh, roto pack cans. That that one's dented. You can see that one's kind of dented. It might be able to be fixed. I don't know. The other side's pushed in. I honestly don't know if we're gonna be able to fix this top. I think it's just gonna need to come off for now. Pushed in the tail light here. Uh, dented up the dented up the door here. That isn't gonna open. That's not gonna open for anything. Buckle the side here and uh, wrinkled it down here. So first of all, let's just get all the rumors out of the way. Uh, yes, I was a dumbass. Uh, last week I came home from a. Uh, Came home from some firearms training. I was kind of in a hurry to get into the house. I uh, parked the Jeep up here in the driveway. I forgot to set the e-brake. Walked into the house, put some stuff down. Heard a friend on uh, two meters, jumped on the radio. I was talking to him and I hear a clunk clunk. I look outside and my Jeep is gone. I ran outside just in time to see it run over all my irrigation and hit a tree down in the yard. So I wasn't in it. I wasn't driving. It wasn't me, but it was my fault. I'm an idiot. Yes, I know. I'm an idiot. On a more friendly note, uh, I am now the proud owner of a uh, Yesu Fusion repeater. And that's what you hear behind me. I have it running. Uh, locally, it is accessible on uh, 444.500 with a positive offset. Uh, kind of switching back between the AMS mode and the fixed mode and trying to work out some issues and stuff. And eventually it'll probably end up uh, on the top of a uh, of a hill somewhere in one of two locations. So let's go take a look at the uh, DR1X Fusion Repeater and we'll talk a little bit about repeaters today. So this is the Yesu Fusion Repeater. This is the DR1X. This is the older model. It's really two FTM 400s in one box. There's a power switch, the setup, switch 
the uh, green or red AC-DC light, and a mic jack. The screen is very simple, looks a lot like the FTM 400, except for this part. You can fix this into AMS or uh, strictly digital mode. Most of the operation of this is all done through the touch screen. The uh, setup menu is makes it look almost exactly like an FTM 400. The function screen brings up all of the parameters that you can adjust on the repeater. Uh, you can adjust the PL tones, the uh, ID mode, the DPIDs, and if you touch it, it'll bring up the list of registered uh, radios. You can adjust the timeout timer, and you can also adjust uh, the announcements that the repeater makes. Tone squelch, uh, there's a button for setting up uh, for remote access if you're running an external controller. You could set the ID there and it'll automatically then uh, do a CW ID. And, uh, and then the power squelch and all the settings that are there normally. Just like on the FTM 400, you use the back button to get you uh, back to the main operating menu. Moving off to the right hand side is a volume control. So you can monitor everything right from the repeater. Moving to the back side, uh, you've got a fuse, you've got an AC in, uh, you can, the ground, the backup power there, there's a fuse. Uh, input output control and the accessory port that you can directly hook up the uh, HRI 200, a fan, and your input and output uh, antenna jacks. Repeaters are just a little bit different than your average radio. You need to have two antennas, or in this case, a set of uh, a duplexer, a set of cans, which you hook everything into. And so I can now use one antenna to control input and output and it separates it out right there in the cans. This is so the repeater can transmit and receive at the same time using the same antenna. There is an accessory jack for the HRI 200 on the back of the repeater. You could plug it straight in. In my case, I am still using the FTM 400, but I have the uh, frequency to the FTM 400 or 100 uh, set to the same frequency as the repeater so I can now link the wires X node manually or by RF and I can uh, I can have the two the node and the repeater in two separate locations so I don't have to run a Windows computer all the time up at a repeater site. So now when I key up on my FT2 or any other radio, um, it will show the uh, receive and the transmit. It comes out and moving down to the wires X node here, when I key up again, it's going to change it to the uh, proper transmit frequency and so the node is now transmitting to the internet and between the internet and the repeater. I'm here on YouTubers uh, Wires X site here and as I key up you'll be able to see um, everything working in perfect synchronicity. Yeah, they actually freaking approved me to be a repeater owner on their, on their program. I've got everything sitting right up here behind me and that is the hum that you hear behind me, all that noise that's uh, running 24 hours a day here in my shack. And let's talk about repeaters for a minute because I get a ton of, uh, I get a ton of messages and emails and stuff from guys that are talking about, you know, a lot of them are new hams and they are complaining that they get on repeaters and guys are less than friendly or nobody comes back and they're just having a hard time 
with, uh, with two meter and 440 repeaters. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is most repeaters are privately owned. They're owned by guys, I guess now, like me. Um, that is the majority of them. And a lot of them, I would say tons and tons of repeaters, probably the majority of them, are owned by guys who basically installed an old style analog repeater, Lord, uh, 30, 40 years ago. You know, these guys are sometimes ancient in age. They're, you know, two, three hundred years old. And they set these repeaters up and they do very little maintenance, if any. Uh, some of these repeaters are down. They just haven't even been on for years, but they keep the pairs active. They're coordinated, so they get listed in repeater directories. And uh, guys like us who are brand new to ham radio, we uh, program those repeater re frequencies into our radios and we get on them. Uh, a lot of times you get nothing back. Oh, sometimes you, uh, you, get the repeater tones back, but you don't have anything else to go on and nobody ever talks on the thing. And then yes, sometimes you get the old asshole who comes back and says, this is my repeater and you're not welcome for the new guys. I, you know what? I want to apologize for the old assholes in the world. Uh, that's really not the spirit of ham radio. It's not the spirit of, uh, of repeater ownership. You see, these guys, they have uh, themselves and their two or three friends that get on the repeater once a month and they have a little chat. And they don't, they just don't want to meet new people or they don't care. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about them, but there are plenty of repeaters out there that you can get on. And look, if you happen to be in an area that there are no repeaters, um, that's when you could pick up, you know, like an open spot too, or a pie star or something. And you could get on with digital, no repeater necessary and have a great time. But guys, there are a ton of repeaters out there that are warm and welcoming and would love to have you as a new ham entering the hobby and get you on the air, help you get on the air. Ah yes, guys. Uh, and another thing, the uh, YouTuber's Room on Wires X is alive and well. And thanks to my friend Pascal, PA2PV, uh, he built an interface that is now going to FCS 003 room 48. Uh, you could get on YouTubers over there from your open spot or your Pi Star and uh, join in all the fun. The, the uh, room is brand new and there's already uh, a constant amount of traffic in there. It is really cool. Uh, we've had, uh, we've had Hosh Nasi join us, uh, Pascal, PA2PV, uh, Jason from Ham Radio 2.0, uh, Chris uh, from the UK who does these long distance v DMR videos has been in there. And then a lot of hams coming in and asking questions and everything. I am hoping that uh, guys that are over in Xenia this weekend We'll get on the YouTubers Wires X room. Hey, uh, John Cruck, that could be you too. And uh, give us some updates of what is going on in the ham radio world at Dayton and uh, bring it back to us here in the rest of the world. And if you're interested in uh, how I'm rebuilding the Jeep, come follow me on my other channel, Safety Third Films. Uh, where I am going to document the entire uh, rebuild of this thing, and uh, it will be it'll be better than it was.
better, stronger, faster. Anyway, guys, uh, that's all I got. I'm Bob, K6UDA. I'm out of here. 7-3.